Hi, this is Dean from Cross Platform Gaming, and in this video, I wanted to showcase a new game released in 2020, if you can believe it, for a retro computer that is, well, at the time of recording, around 37 years old. The game is a graphical text based adventure called The Curse of Rabenstein. It's been developed by Stefan Volkt. Apologies, Stefan, if I've pronounced that incorrectly, but being British, I'm not really good at non English names. And according to their website, it's the first release from Puddlesoft a collective formed by members of Pond and with the mission of creating new games for classic 8-bit and 16-bit home computers of the 1980s. Just to note that the version I'm playing here is for the Commodore 64, but it is also available for the Commodore Plus 4, the Amstrad CPC, various flavours of ZX Spectrum including the new Spectrum Next, the Amiga, Atari ST, DOS and modern PCs. I will leave links to the game download and Puddlesoft websites in the description below. So this video is not intended as a full walkthrough of the game, it's just to give you a taster of the gameplay. Also, there's no audio on the Commodore 64 version. I do like the opening couple of screens here. They're very reminiscent of the sort you used to get from the 8-bit games way back in the mid-1980s, and the colour palette chosen works very well in my opinion in helping to instil a gothic tone throughout the gameplay. I will leave gaps in commentary as we go through so you get a chance to read the text without too much interruption from me, but we start our adventure on a forsaken path in the Black Forest with strange things afoot. Apologies as you notice my dreadful typing and spelling mistakes as I reacquaint myself with the Commodore 64 keyboard. Well, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Part of the fun of these types of games, I find, is working out the best way to interact with the parser in order to get the computer to understand what it is you're trying to do. I won't be giving away any spoilers, but I will say that I notice that my use of what I would think of as similar words would often produce different results. However, it does tend to follow the verb-noun format with which anyone who has previously played this genre of game will be familiar. If at first you don't succeed, just try a different way of phrasing and you should get there in the end. As you can see, each game screen is split into an upper half displaying a graphic of the location you're in, with a description, key items or points of interest and directions you can move in as text in the lower half. You will also note that the central screen area shows your current location and keeps track of the number of terms you've taken so far. If you're interested, I managed to finish this game in 225 turns. How many turns will you take? Let me know in the comments. Here we are in the obligatory graveyard with Mausoleum. I think the way that Stefan structures his descriptions is really effective and helps convey a sense of eeriness throughout the whole of the gameplay. There is definitely a sense of foreboding that builds as you progress through the game and provides the incentive for you to want to continue and uncover what has happened. Ah, the village inn with its welcoming fireplace, friendly locals and helpful innkeeper. Hmm. But just look at the clever use of the colour palette again. You can almost feel the heat from the fire as the light it casts throws ominous shadows across the room. Or is it just me? Well that's the end of this quick peek at the Curse of Rabenstein. I really enjoyed playing it. It won't take you too long to finish the game and I imagine you'll complete it in around an hour or so unless you get stuck on some of the puzzles, none of which are too obscure though. Just remember to examine everything. Whilst the game is available completely free of charge, the author asks for a voluntary payment of whatever you think the game is worth. I made a contribution, and if you do play this game, I encourage you to do the same to support the development of future projects from these guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe to Cross Platform Gaming if you like what we do. See you next time.